Hello, people of the internet. Hello. I am American McGee. <laughs> I'm Martin. And yeah, I was I was expecting you to do something terrible. I was thinking about it. I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> uh, we are coming to you live from Shanghai in the underground lair. And uh, what are we doing today? We're going to play some Alice Madness Returns, which I don't really know if we're going to set a record for the longest period of time in history that somebody has played this game. It's taking a really long time. It is, but I don't know why, but I'm just glad you're past that other bit. Well, I only play stream. 30 minutes every stream, so it kind of makes sense. If you only play the game <laughs> 30 minutes every two weeks, then it'll take forever. Suppose. So, um... We're going to do that, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully it won't be a section that I get stuck in. We're going to give away some prizes. What are we giving away today? I thought we have something fun. We are giving away a, a code, a code. For each person to the soundtrack to the movie Hardware by, by Simon Boswell. Simon Boswell, mm. renowned British composer. He's BAFTA nominated. We were digging through some of the things that he's worked on and associated with, and like the web of things that are in the world yeah. of Simon Boswell or inspired by the people that, that he's worked with or that, um, anyway, and there's some stuff we can talk about later. It was quite interesting. It even, it, it, we managed to find one degree of, of Nicolas Cage. We did. <laughs> and uh, we, tr we went into like, a, stumbled into the tentacle filled uh, pit of one of these new Nicolas Cage horror films from the Mandy that people. We've never heard of. <laughs> and so, you know, thank you, Simon Boswell, for dragging us into that Lovecraftian horror pit. Anyway, we'll give away codes to Simon Boswell's soundtrack to the movie Hardware. Plus, plus everyone who wins will also get a frozen caterpillar signed art print. There you go. So you yeah. see, the two of them are together there. There's, there's Simon. And there's a frozen caterpillar. So that's what you're going to win today. Uh, if one of, if you're one of the four lucky people who wins prizes today, um, However, we're also, let's say that it can't be a YouTube person. <laughs> oh yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, you should be watching on Twitch. But... Yeah, sorry, it's Nightbot. It only does Twitch. Yeah, yeah it's okay. currently sorry. Uh, so uh, we're also going to talk about plushy dreadfuls. We do have the anxiety rabbit is in the mysterious shop now on sale. Um, so he's he's been launched, and also these little anxiety uh, bunnies. Um, we've actually keychainified them, <laughs> so you can now attach your anxiety bunnies to your keys and carry them around in your pocket. That's kind of cool. Yay! Um, plus, we'll talk about the Memento Mori decision coin. Uh, we'll talk about art from Alice Asylum. We'll talk about maybe try to get to some news about um, Oz Adventures, though. Mm. I still don't have anything I'm allowed to talk about there, so maybe we won't talk about that. And you're going to talk about your frustration at the game called Re Returnal, Returnal um, which, which then triggered my thinking on a conversation I've recently had with Alex Crowley <laughs> about the game design for Alice Asylum and how the death mechanic would work in there. So yeah, we'll go and uh, talk about that. Some questions and comments from Patreon as well. There you go. I'm sure there's some good ones in here, probably. Uh, yeah, so I think we just jump... Oh, we should say hi. Say hi. I did see hi. Wendy. Wendy was the first one in the chat there over on yeah. uh, on Twitch. So, hello, Wendy. Yeah. And uh, who else do we have? Clue Faker. It's 3 a.m., but I finally made it to one of the live streams. Woo! But the way that they spelled flu is sort of like the kind that you have off a, of a, a chimney. A chimney flu. How would... Why would you be a flu... Well, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I do see patient 322... Hello, and Nicholas Brockow, Brocco. Juvia Melissa's here. Mm. Hello, how are you? And the Octo Chicken Greg is here as well. He's exclusive. American McGee about to turn Alice Asylum into a roguelike. No, <laughs> not going to do that. Some new ones. Who's new? TKI Scatter? Laddie, Laddie Iris? Latrevis? Hmm. The Burrs? Danky3980. And there is Magna Gamer who says, The worst part about working in a factory, I have work at 6 a.m. Got to go to sleep in 10 minutes. This sucks. Sorry to hear that, Magna mm -hmm. Gamer. You can catch us on YouTube later when it's yeah. uploaded. <laughs> and I see Tom Resnick is there in the chat as well. For those of you who don't know, Tom has done some of the music for our projects from Out of the Woods and the trailer to Out of the Woods. Um, to some of the tracks inspired by the Alice series. Some of those are over on his YouTube channel. I've mentioned those in our Patreon posts. 
in the past. So if you want to check out some of Tom's music, you can just go punch in Tom Resnick over on uh, YouTube and you'll you'll be treated to some very fantastical ear sounds. sounds those those are the ears. best sounds. Mm. All right. Is this interface normally on this side of the screen? Yes. I don't know about that. I don't believe you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we're going to play some Alice Madness Returns. I don't even remember where we left this. Do you? I know. Uh, <laughs> um, we're going to find I out very shortly. I do want to say this, that recently Alex and I have been working on the narrative for Alice Asylum. And he came up with an ending for... Oh, right. We left it in this uh, side scrollery business. He came up with an ending for Asylum that does a really good job of linking into... Um, what I've talked about for Alice Otherlands, which is Alice's ability to to travel into the minds of other other people in London, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and also does some really good tying up of like the narrative and the character. Anyway, it, everything a story should do, um, and it makes me uh, happy to kind of get to some of the later sections in this game and and to make sure that everything aligns with my memories um, about how this game ends. But yeah, it makes me also happy just to know that like we're getting really close to an into the story writing process on Asylum um, and how that would link up very nicely with the stuff we're seeing here. So it's good. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, so you you were talking about the death mechanic in re what rewind returnal returnal. Yeah. Um, and I mentioned that I also had this conversation with Alex this week because we were talking about like what happens when Alice dies. And Alex had mentioned to me an idea, um, some, I'm going to probably state it incorrectly, but it was something along the lines of every time she dies, uh, something, something happens, and you're going to see this particular sequence, and you're going to have this interaction with this character. And he, it kind of went on for a while, and I said to him, after he finished outlining it, I said, hey, in my experience, one of the things that you really don't want to mess with in a game is the way the death mechanic works. Right. Because it's one of the easiest places in the world to really frustrate people. Um, <laughs> my sense is that when you die in a game, you just want to die. And you want to just start over as quickly as possible near to the place where you died. And anytime you mess with that, and I've tried, by the way, so I mean, I speak, I do speak from experience. Anytime you mess with that, um, it's kind of funny or quirky, like the first or second time that you try it. But after a while, it becomes incredibly tedious and annoying. So... Is yeah. that what what was the experience you had with Returnal? Well, like I explained to you earlier, the gist is that when you die, you return to the very beginning of the game. Uh, you've lost most of the stuff that you've collected, but some of the permanent stuff, which can make you go through the levels a bit faster, can stick with you. I get it. Fair enough. So, like I said to you, Going from point A to where you died under normal circumstances could take you a few hours if you played the game. But as you progress and you get these new abilities, you could get from point A to point B in five minutes. So you think, oh, that's not so bad starting again. It's just five minutes. The thing that frustrated me is that even though you can get back there in five minutes, you haven't played the game, so you haven't been picking up good weapons, you haven't been picking up abilities, you haven't been picking up anything to make yourself tough again. So you get back to where you were, and you get your ass handed to you, and you go straight back to the start of the game, right? And the only way you can mitigate that is to not do the shortcut to where you died. You need to play the game so you can power up and be ready for the place where you died. Right. And it just started frustrating the crap out of me. The game itself is perfectly fine. You know, running, shooting, jumping, dodging, it's great. But after you've died so many times, it just really started grating. Sure. Well, so, it's interesting because uh, yeah, got rid of it. The mechanic you're <laughs> describing is one where it sounds like they thought, hey, it's a good idea to return the player to the beginning of the game. Um, and then you have to restart. And you got the signal that... Um, the re that that you since you can run quickly back to where you died 
you should and could, mm -hmm. uh, only to find out that that's actually not the case, and you have to recollect and re... You know, in, in an MMO, um, I'm just using a really old game as an example, like Diablo, uh, if you died in one of in some place, then all your crap was left there. So mm -hmm. then the the sort of ah no, no. so the sort of return <laughs> to the point where you died necessarily meant that if you could get there, and sometimes that was a bit of a challenge because you might have died deep down in a really difficult dungeon. Yeah. But if you could get there, you could recover all your crap. Yeah. And you could just effectively continue playing on. But yeah. it sounds like in Respawn, re Redo, whatever, <laughs> um, that they don't give you that option. and That, that, that is correct. Yeah. So I can, I can see how that would be, really. Yeah, so like I said, I put like a couple of dozen hours into it. I got some good value, but then, yeah, I just sold it on uh, and bought Maneater instead. Which is a blast. <laughs> right, which, I mean, just based on the title of that, it sounds like it's a lot of fun. So I do see some comments. <clears throat> uh, yes, what have we got? Patient322. The only thing could be worse if when you die in the game, the game shoots itself from the console, flies back into the case, the case re-shrink wraps itself, <laughs> and then flies back to the store for you to then have to play, and you, you have to buy it again to play it. Right. You know what? I would have just not bought it again. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a good point, though. Uh, I see that Tom says, Thoughts on death sending Alice back to a lost realm where she needs to quickly find her way back. See, this is the thing. I don't. I strongly don't believe in that. And I think that was similar in, in some fashion to what Alex mentioned. Again, I, I don't mean to mis misrepresent um, Alex's thing. I, I, dis, I will automatically, and I told him this, I will automatically, instinctively dismiss anything that does anything to mess with a death mechanic by making it longer or making it interesting or make no again i feel very strongly when you die then you should just be respawned immediately in the nearest point that makes sense to where you died obviously not right back in the middle of like the gunfire and the thing that killed you um but that you really don't want to make a thing out of death and there may be games out there that have done this somehow successfully where it's interesting and worthwhile uh, I don't know what they are, I haven't played them, but at least for the games I make and the games that I play, not interested. Yeah. Uh, Stitched Heart 13 mentions Death Stranding, had the death mechanic where you had to find your body again. That Basically me... you swam back to it. Yep. It was kind of weird because that part of the game didn't really do anything, it wasn't difficult, there was no challenge, it was just an extra like couple of minutes of stuff you had to do for no reason. Right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think uh, someone else here, the fall summer says death should be frictionless. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think that the notion of death in a video game is a weird one because you mean to tell the player that they've failed. And in any normal circumstance where this adventure real in say a film or a book, that death would be the end of the tale, right? It would be the end of the story. Mm -hmm. But we all understand as gamers that this is a, it's an indicator that you as the gamer failed to navigate properly, but that the player's story, Alice's story in that case, will continue where it picked up once you respawn, and you don't really need to make a big deal out of that. Now, clearly the people who designed the game that you're playing thought, hey, we're going to fix this, we're going to turn this feature into something really interesting, but it sounds like based on your experience, they kind of failed. It didn't do it for me. Right. Um, but Death Stranding didn't do it for me. Yeah. You know, I played it for a while, and things like the death mechanic you just mentioned turned me off. I just was yeah. like, eh, no. I mean, I generally love Housemark stuff. They are excellent at the twin stick shooter genre. I've loved a bunch of their previous games. Uh, so, yes, if any of them are watching, I'm not dissing you. It's just this one didn't tickle my fancy. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. You're allowed to not like games sometimes, Barton. Yeah. No one's going to beat you up for that. Hope not. Um, somebody mentioned that if I had gone behind the uh, the stone in that temple we were just in, we could have found the Spicy Horse logo. There was a little bit of an Easter egg there. I should have, but I should have done it. I missed it. Oh, well. Uh, what else is going on? Um... Oh, yeah, in Arkham. Yeah. Uh, the Batman games, when you die, the baddies smack talk you. They kind of stand over you and say something terrible. Which, I mean, that was kind of fun. 
But uh, as for the as actual you coming back into the game part, yeah, I think for stuff like that, as long as the content that you're played remains fresh. So, you know, if every time you died and then the baddies stand over you and they say the exact same line, <laughs> that would get old. But if every time they stand over you, they say something fresh and new, all right. I seem to remember them having quite a lot of different things to say. It's been a while since I've played, so I could be wrong. Hmm. But yeah, enjoyed that. That was fun. Untickled Martin out of five. One untickled Martin out of five. Is it the rating you just gave it? Yeah. Hmm. Maybe two. Two untickled out of five. <laughs> Maybe. You know. So we are getting one of the uh, in-game cutscenes here with Jack Splatter, who in a previous scene we saw attempt to murdy, murder, murdy, 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 murdy. I'll murder you. <laughs> uh, tried to murder Nan Sharp and burn down the uh, the mermaid. So yeah, he's sort of giving a, a bit of the story. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good night, Alice. You're missing their excellent voice acting. It's very, it's very British. I can of them. watch. Uh, can watch a let's play later of me <laughs> of you. Okay, <laughs> you go on later and watch <laughs> watch this. Yeah, so these scenes are really nice because they do give you a little bit of a sense of London, and this will be the London that you visit as adult Alice in uh, in Asylum, and that's some of the stuff that's getting worked on now. Is the interaction that you will eventually have with the adult character. I, I think there's a lot of people out there who wish we'd spend a bit more time exploring and, and painting this world, but we just we just didn't have the room for it, we didn't have the budget for it, um, but there's certainly plenty here to explore, and I, I su assume this is what it looked like where you grew up, Martin, is that right? That's what it's like where all British people grow up. Right. So, like, you, you kind of recognize, do you know this guy? Is that somebody you knew? Is that like Bob or... Yeah. Or Bub, I guess you call him Bub. Not, not from the deep south. Oh, okay. Well, so you're more of like a London person. This yeah, this would make sense. <laughs> yeah. So this is the police station. Um, yeah, that's what they all look Apparently, like. Apparently, somebody's in trouble for cockfighting and abusive language. Oh no! Uh, ye oldie times where you could go to jail for cockfighting and abusive language. <laughs> Pretty sure you can still do that now these days, can't you? That's true. That's true. Um, Ghibli Girls here apparently was very late for a very important date. All right. Um, uh, tech, uh, what? Ten, ten tunes. I don't know. Am I the only one who loves the soundtrack? They made it so great. Yeah, just you. Only you. <laughs> Everyone else thought it was crap. That's right. <laughs> uh, no, everybody likes the soundtrack. And I think for Asylum, we're planning to have another great soundtrack. That's the plan. Yes. Oh, we're in a kind of a scary dream sequence. Ooh. What's going on? Wonderland and in London are melding together. It's Lunderland. Oh no. This is pretty cool. The transition from the jails into uh, the Queen's Palace. Yeah. I think this is the scene where we come face to face with the tentacles. The tentacle queen herself. Face so to face with tentacles of, right there. Part of what... Um, Alex wrote into the new story ending uh, involves the Queen and Alice's mom and some other stuff that, that turns out pretty pretty good. I'm very happy with it. I, so I think we're going to be sharing that. He's got one more pass to do to clean some stuff up. And then uh, I think he's going to share that over on Patreon. So our patrons have something to look forward to. And then everybody else can look forward to the thing three days after our patrons get to see it. Yeah. Oh, this is the uh, the card flying castle bit. Yeah, this is very seems people, it. People like this a lot. Transform! Poof! Sailor Moon. I thought she was gonna do like an Iron Man thing where all the pieces <laughs> would come flying out and attach and <laughs> off she goes. Should do. Look at that hair. Amazing hair physics. Really is. You know, at the time when we had all of this stuff on screen um, in the Spicy Horse offices, it it was super impressive. Because there was nothing else really in the market that that was showing off the graphics and the physics and all the other fun stuff just quite like this right so this kind of stuff um is some of my favorite stuff it's the mid-air floaty castle stuff and again i've always said that and i try to push that more of it when we're making these games but for some reason it's always really hard to get the team to jump on board with that um, right. so i'm hoping with asylum we'll end up with a bit more floaty stuff 
Okay. At least if I have any say in the matter. <laughs> have you seen um, was it Unreal 5 had a new engine demo uh, put out? Did you see? Did not. Yeah, looking pretty good, what that thing can do. Yeah, well that's what we'll be uh, using. Okay. So, so uh, I'm imagining we're going to be able to do some pretty cool things with it. And that's one of the nice things about working on a game that's got a surreal setting is that you really can push the engines beyond what would... Like, you know, sure, you can take advantage of the technical and the amazing stuff when you make like a World War II shooter, no problem. You can make stuff, stuff super realistic and gritty. Um, but I think that these engines really shine when you do surreal Right. And, uh, of course, that's where we would be going with it. So that was the original inspiration I had for doing an Alice game in the first place. I just thought, we've seen enough Space Marines uh, <laughs> represented in these these engines. Why not try something a little more artistic? Why and, not? Um, so that was that was a big part of why I wanted to try to do an Alice Wonderland game. And here we are, 20 years later, still talking about it. Yay. Go figure. I guess maybe you probably didn't see the... Uh... The state of play for Horizon Forbidden West. Is that the didn't... Horizon Zero Dawn still going type of thing? Yep. Yep. They... So you didn't get into that, did you? That one didn't tickle your fancy, even it, though I, I never, played I never the played hell it. out of it and I... loved it. Oh, that's the one that, yeah, I didn't like that. That's the mm. girl, the guy, the girl that, like, takes over the robot dinosaur stuff. Yeah. Yeah, nah. I tried, but it but, just didn't uh, do it for me. Yeah, it's looking really good. Um... Was it Gorilla? I think it's Gorilla Games. By the way, if you're uh, saying stuff in the chat, I can't see that because I'm playing the game, and it's Martin's job sorry, to we're look a, at it. But he's, we're, we're busy bantering. He's a wanker. Martin's a wanker. That's a British term. Okay, let me let me go and through so some. So he can't he can't read your comments because he's just not paying attention. He's not very good at his job. Can't read and banter at the same time. Well, maybe less banter, more reading. All I'm right. just as a creative, note, you know. <laughs> Okay, do, 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 do. Shalukard says their favorite part is where you play as Kaiju Alice. Have we done that bit yet? The stomp on the, the stompy the, the bitsy part. Um, you know, I don't know where we are, so <laughs> I can't really tell you that. Uh, sorry. Not uh, very. I, if you've not followed along in this series, I'm not actually very good at my own game, or at least I pretend not to be, and uh, that's part of the shtick. So I, I can't, I uh, can't tell you where I am. I can't tell you what I'm doing, because if I did, then that would destroy the illusion of me being terrible at my own game. Would. Yes. Um, Octo Chicken, American quickly getting out of the conversation about Horizon Zero Dawn by mentioning the comments section. Uh, <laughs> I don't mind talking about Horizon Zero Dawn. I, we've talked about it before. We have. I, I just don't find that it... Well, it just didn't do anything for me, so... Um... Dark Darkalade says the giant Alice bit is ahead of you, so it's to come. Yay. Let's look forward to That's that. That's great. Uh, I guess I'm being trying to like be inspired to um, to shrink so I can see that platform, and I see the platform, and I see that pressing on the button on the other side opens the door in that floaty castle over there. But what I don't see is what am I supposed to do? Once that door has been opened, look. There's the little the thingies up there. Get up there. I'm trying, but there's Try no. Harder. The mushrooms aren't here yet. Where's the frickin' mushrooms? Look. Oh, you found a bug. Well, clearly I haven't done something in this section that I'm supposed to do first. So let's go do the rest of the stuff, and then we'll come back and. Yes. Blue Baker says it's weird to hear American saying wank ah. Oh yeah, and I've been told that I'm not by by my British friends that that's not the. The term. I'm allowed to call my British friends cunts. Um, <laughs> Are you? That's pretty strong. <laughs> I don't know. And twats. twats. This, this is just what I've been. <laughs> this is what I was told by by my friend Jamie. Was he doesn't mind if I call him a twat, and he doesn't mind if I call him a cunt, but I'm definitely not allowed to call him a wanker. Really? Yeah. yeah I would say wanker is better than the c word. See, this is very strange. <laughs> we don't know this. I I don't know this. Uh, now, mm. the way that the C word is used in the West, in, in the US, for example, it you're really not supposed to call women that, and then if you call a man that, he won't really understand it. So, we don't have a lot of training, though I do understand that it <laughs> is in general, in both, in both cultures, it's a big no-no naughty word. But wanker is the one that I didn't know 
could be so offensive to some and that's what I found from my buddy Jamie he was like don't call me that you can call me a twat or whatever but don't <laughs> call me a wanker so I huh who knew I guess we've all got our things we do Darkalade says you need to put the rabbit on the raised button and then do something that scrolled past well that's what I've been doing <laughs> I, I put the rabbit on this button they do some kind of sidestep I think they said what I don't know I think you know Maybe you got to press them both at the same time. But look, here's the problem. There, oh, see, there's a platform out there. Go, now. go, go! Uh, the okay. switch brings down an invisible yeah, platform yeah, on okay. the right. All right, all right. So we need to put the thingy here. Then we need to go press the door one. And then we got to jump through the. You know, <laughs> this is all a bit contrived. Anyway, who builds stuff like this? Yeah. What's wrong with your imagination, Alice? Oh, so patient hopefully... 322 is buffering, but it's not us, according to our stats. Well, you don't know. Astral might have reset our VPN no. while we're... Is there an email in the inbox there? Don't know. But Glasswire's up and running, and Streamlabs says no dropped frames. Hey! So... What am I supposed to do now? Um... Go back onto that and go up. I failed. Well, Martin, get prepared to be stuck here for the next three live streams. Nah. Look, it's easy. It's not. Is, is that whole... where you came from? Yeah, yeah, but the whole timing of it is just... Oh. This is exactly what I was talking about before. I don't like these hair trigger... What am I, what am I trying to say? Uh, skin of your teeth timing type puzzles. I, I feel that this would be as enjoyable were the timing just a little more forgiving. Does that make sense? So, well, I guess. Let's make sure we put lots of those in the asylum. Lots of hair trigger. Yeah, like, pixel skin, perfect. Skin of your teeth type of puzzles. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Come on, get on it. Oh, that was... Portal Diver got their newest slash latest Patreon poster today. Wow. Ooh, nice to see some stuff is actually making it through to delivery in the world. <laughs> Don't say that. You'll scare people off from buying things from us. All of our stuff does get there. It just takes a little longer than usual these days. Yeah. It's very rare to have an actual proper loss. Oh, it, it kind of head faked me there. It was like, up, up, you're going to fall through the world. And then I, I didn't. <laughs> I like I like that kind of stuff. Uh, Princess Axel. Um, hi. Uh, something... Illy, Illy guys, so much. So excited for Alice Asylum. Saw this free for Game Pass on Xbox. I'm playing it on Nightmare Model. Wish me luck. Oh, Madness Returns, apparently currently free on Xbox. Well, there you go. Go Woo! play it. Everybody go play it. Good luck, Princess Axel. Hmm. Yeah, the um, that stuff somehow magically makes money for me now. I don't understand it <laughs> entirely, <laughs> but... Um, you know, I, I I just started getting these checks from EA related to subscription service something somethings, and it was like, it was it kind of came out of the blue. Um, but right. I'm I'm never going to complain about that though because historically <laughs> um, we never like the developers and everything never really got any revenue, and then something got signed after Madness Returns related to oh no hey that was really rude. Ah! <laughs> Um, so anyway, something got signed and it had something to do with merch rights and then streaming rights. And, and then suddenly like the thing actually started making money. Um, so, Hey, that's cool. So yeah, go, go do streaming services of Magic's Return. <laughs> it actually does something for me. Yay. Yay. I can't, uh, uh, can't complain about money. Well, some people do. Wow. I made it through that. I'm excellent. I'm mildly impressed with myself. Well done. Mm. I'm not a. I'm not the cunt that you say I am. Peeps to the peeps says hi, Martin. Hi. Um, what else we got? These kind of look like alien face hugger eggs. They'd be kind of funny if like xenomorphs popped out of them. <laughs> we just suddenly went into like an Alice aliens crossover. That'd be kind of fun. Dark Lady is proud of you. For how well you're doing. I'm proud of me. It's not easy pretending to suck this hard. Um, False Summer 
saying the colors here are gorgeous. Yes. They are very, it's a good palette. Yeah, this is one of my favorite sections in the game as well. And we got some pretty cool um, art print concept art stuff that came out of this as well. Uh, this the, the art print from this section, there was a uh, Queensland Gate, I think it was called, mm -hmm. was the art print that inspired me to start like taking art prints seriously. Right. In fact, so there you Good go. Print. There's a bit of trivia for you. Oh, no. Oh, Ooh. come on. Oh, oh, boy. Yes, this area is gorgeous. Look at that. Blooded skull. A um, little late to the stream, but they're here now. Woo, welcome. Woo. Ooh, we got a cutscene. Well, Blooded Skull, after this cutscene, you will be just in time for the first prize giveaway of the stream because we're going to. Back to admire your. We're going to listen to. Uh, Cheshire Cat, and we're gonna to be, be done with this. Cool. She has a cancer. She is a Harsh. Uh oh. Alice getting smart with the Cheshire Cat. We'll be talking back to the cat. Mmm, delicious water. I think he's going to need more lines, more dialogue in the new game as well. Right. Yeah. He's good. I like him a lot. And that's Roger. Roger Jackson. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it. That brings us to the end of today's... Oh, no. Oh, no. Ah, we'll just let her die. Um, that brings us to the end of today's play session. So... Well done. We're going to do question. Have you prepared some terrible questions for prize time? Nope. But I've got one. Actually, it's from Jen. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, right, well, so we're going to be giving away a prize. Um, mm -hmm. Part of the prize is a code for the soundtrack to the movie Hardware by composer Simon Boswell. Well, you can see in a little triangle just below me yes. right now, just down there. And uh, <laughs> you will also get with the code, let me see here, I've got this thing, there we go. Uh, you also get with the code, yeah, you can get the code redeemed by visiting that web address um, and then with the code you also get the frozen caterpillar art print which martin is going to hold up for everyone to see now what is the question question is we recently just talked about the game that frustrated me what game frustrated you the most oh. don't say madness returns to be clever or the other alice game the first one don't yeah. say that although that's <laughs> fine um, what game, what video game has frustrated you the most, or yes. me? Say in the chat, Nightbot will see that you are talking, and you will be entered into the prize hmm. draw. Um, that's tough for me. So, I've heard you talk about games that you've smacked and broken the disc well, before. There. Lad 3 Risk, Bloodborne. Bloodborne. I the snapped one that... the Bloodborne disc right. out of rage, um, and I don't regret it one bit. <laughs> I see a lot of people mentioning Cuphead, which is funny, because that's the one that the Dean Takahashi guy got in trouble for mm. not knowing how to play correctly, and yet it sounds like some people did find it frustrating. It's really difficult in places, um, but I enjoyed it. There's uh, Jorn Skittles, Skitties, whatever, saying re... re Eternal. It's been a massive headache for me, and I deleted it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're not you're was, not alone. Well, luckily I didn't get it digitally, so I could sell it on. Right. So uh, yeah. I, you know, I think recently mine was the delivery backpack guy, the Norman Reedus game. Um, what was that mm, called? Death Stranding. Death Stranding. I I just found it to be not rewarding enough in relation to the effort that had to be put into it. So okay. that, that made it really frustrating, and I just gave up on it. So Mama Basil also agrees on that. A couple of people mentioning The Evil Within. Mm. Mm. Love that game. Don't remember being angry with it. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. No, great game. Oh, well. All right. Uh, so um, we're going to roll here. it. We are going to roll it. Uh, three, two, one. Wait, where's the button? It is Malicious... X misery. Mm. Congratulations. Uh, so you need to do two things. The first thing you need to do is to send an email to support at mysterious.design, include your address, your name, your phone number, all that in a human readable format, and then be sure to do that within 24 hours. And then the other thing you need to do, um, you will be sent a code. I guess when we send you the code, we can send you the instructions um, for the soundtrack from Simon 
and then there's going to be this web address that you need to go to but i guess that doesn't matter until you get the email with the code in it so yeah we'll, we'll probably not be jerks and um we'll we'll include the link with the code maybe because otherwise that would be stupid if we didn't do that <laughs> okay congrats uh, well done yeah congratulations misery oh that's rachel that's rachel garza Oh, we like Rachel very oh, much. Cool. Hello, Rachel. Congratulations. She's been with us for ages. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, you have won something. There you go. So, let's have a look at art. Um, as I said, we are in a phase right now where we're working on... Did the web just die over there? No, but it peaked on downloading, which is why the uploading shrunk. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, so, as I said, work on Alice Asylum continues apace. We have our art team working on illustrations. Right now, they're working through a section having to do with the memory mines and the Veil of Tears. So, that's a section where young Alice is actually going and digging through the memories of, of herself as a child and then she starts digging through the memories of adult Alice or like later years Alice so basically child Alice has been trapped in this snow globe this whole time and she can't get out um, but she can tap into a bunch of the stuff that's been happening outside of the snow globe and so she does that now this is this is an image we showed in a previous live stream uh, that she will see the memory of Radcliffe and Bumby hanging out in the house um, anyway there's a couple of these. These are all coming from Adam Nera, <laughs> Nera, Narazansky. Did Maybe. I say, did I say it right this time? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he's been working on these, and they're turning out really nice. And he does have a new one, or a new series. And this was the sequence of, of, of images from which he pulled the most recent one. And you can see this is all... <coughs> Excuse Bless me. you. I'm very sneezy these days. Don't know what's going on. Um, anyway, you can see that this is stuff that's going on in the asylum. Did we show this during the last live stream? The one we where did. she's looking down through the floor? We did. Okay, so he's done this one. Um, apparently we showed this on the last live stream. Yeah, I think I remember talking about how Alex had done some painting over this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, this, this is the area that the artists are exploring. Now, Joey, I don't know if I have a piece from her today, but she is working on the section that comes right after this. Um, this we didn't see so much of during the last live stream. Is that right? Cause this is all the school that section is correct. Okay. So this is new stuff. Um, what's going on here is that Alice will visit the memories of her time in the home for wayward children. So this is basically like the orphanage that she ends up in after the asylum. Now, again, we're, we're revisiting a lot of this stuff because the character that we're playing in Asylum is the child who's been locked inside the adult all these years. So it kind of gives us an opportunity, which is necessary, to retell earlier sections of the story. Look, I didn't know that they... We, we feature you in the game, Martin. Did you? Yeah. That's, gonna, that's just little, like a uh, spitting likeness. Going to have cameos in the game. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're going to have to license you, I guess. Can you do some voiceover to go with this? Oi, governor. What what you doing down there? Get up here on me bed. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> that sounds exactly correct for this. Uh, yes. So... <laughs> Um, so this will be the revisiting and yeah, it's, it's a good way for us to, in the storytelling process to go back through things that you would know if you played the first and second game, but if you'd never played the first and second game, uh, you wouldn't know. And so this kind of story reintroduction or the retelling of the things that have happened to the character in the past, um, all that's very necessary. So that's what all these sequences are about. Now, if you've been following along, you'll know that there's a lot more sort of meat that goes around where these things take place in terms of the child's journey to escape the snow globe. Um, but these storytelling sections are really critical to sort of bringing you, the player, and the child up to speed on what it is that's going on and trying to figure out how to escape from this, this snow globe reality, which is in effect like the prison of PTSD. So... That's what Ooh. that's all about. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, so this is the image that Adam turned in, I guess it was yesterday. Um, it's just, just popped up in Monday. 
And um, this, of course, is taken from the Home for Wayward Children. This is where Bumby has his office. So you can see here on the door, it mm. says Dr. Bumby. Indeed it does. Um, and then, of course, the children here have got the numbers around their necks. So that had to do with some of the story we were telling in Madness Returns of the first you're sort of objectifying the kids you're you're taking away their identities and their names and you're just numbering them um the other thing that that has to do with is the fact that you later on discover that bumby's selling them so when people come to the home for wayward children they're basically buying goods off the shelf and mm. that was that was the notion behind the numbering it's like these kids have just become objects for sale and uh, yeah, so this is a good, I think, capturing of that memory sequence. Would that actually happen in real life? Do, like orphanages and whatever, kids just get numbered back in the day? So I don't know if you've re recently read, um, there's a quite terrible story that came out of Canada. And it has to do with the children who were um, orphans or and or, you know, taken by the state and put into homes for re-education. And uh, they recently discovered, I think it was on the order of hundreds of bodies of these kids who had been murdered there by the people working for the state. And then it's come out that, um, yeah, they were abused, uh, they were murdered, and then they were buried on site and that this thing was was covered up and hidden for years and years and years. And that's relatively recent history that that took place and that was um really just an awful story i i don't even really want to talk about it but it does make the point that this type of stuff does happen in the world um and it happens all over the world and it happens in places where you might think that kind of thing doesn't happen here right you know it's it's always convenient to point to places in the world that are foreign and distant um but the truth is that these kinds of things happen in our own backyards and um, they happen to people that we know and we love. And that's one of the reasons why these games exist, because I've been either personally impacted by things like this and or know people who have. Um, and so, yeah, it happens everywhere. It's terrible. Yeah. Hope the people involved get their necks trodden on for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, somebody here is mentioning that, um, you know, this thing that happened in Canada wasn't the first time. There were 600 in Ireland with a similar situation. Um, somebody's pointing out that it was 215 kids in Canada. That was 215 kids that they found had been murdered. Um, so, I mean, the, the, the scale of some of this stuff and the, the, the sort of turning it into an industry is a thing and it's awful. Um, and it's, it's shocking when you think about that places like the US, for example, uh, because that's a rich country also happens to be one of the places with the most amount of sex trafficking because people have money and they are able to do these sorts of crimes. And I mean, just, just because it's a Western country doesn't mean that these things don't exist there. You know, one of the stats I remember hearing um, at some point was if you talk about financial crimes, what are the two countries in the world where the largest amount of financial crime take place? Again, you'd think like, oh, it must be some third world or it must be some um, place where it's despotic and they, they don't have a proper rule of law and they don't have... No, um, it's the US first and Switzerland second. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that because the amount of money that exists in those places is so great that when the crimes are committed, they go way beyond the scale of what's even possible to commit in smaller countries where perhaps the legal system or the enforcement isn't as good. Um, so we often don't realize the scale of how bad things can be is probably more related to the size of the country and how much wealth is within that country, not so much to the local legal or enforcement um, rules. So uh, if you're just talking about scale, you'll find that larger countries <clears throat> with more money tend to have worse problems like that. All right. Yep. Ooh, that took a, a bit of a turn, that conversation. Let's, let's, should we move it on? Well, sure. But I mean, that is at the core <laughs> of the games that we're making. 
Suppose. Uh, what it what is going on here so i you know I, I think it's worth recognizing that from time to time um it is all fun and games to some extent but at the same time um there is a there is a very serious note that's being played in these games uh so this is the kind of coloring paint over that omri did on the image that adam originated and you can see that he's just added a bit more fire and flame to mm. to the train uh, so yeah, this, uh, this often happens where one of our artists will turn in a piece of art and then the other artists will jump in there and pee all over it. So. Yay. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I often kind of cringe when I see them doing this to each other because I don't know how much it's welcome. Sometimes it's welcome. Sometimes it's not. And I know as a creator, sometimes when I've delivered something and then someone jumps in there and makes a bunch of edits, my initial reaction oftentimes can be a defensive one and I'll think get like, bent. yeah, get my out, stuff was perfect. Get out of my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the end result always is good. These guys all get along and they do a good job of collaborating. So <laughs> no worries. No worries, mate. Are you missing anything in the chat there? Yeah, some people just mentioning all of that terrible nonsense we were just talking about. Uh, what else we got? Um, doo -doo. There is evidence that our own self-awareness is partially the reason for our mental illnesses, like depression, says Faye Wooler. Probably. Yeah, that, that's true. Uh, but the one thing is that other <clears throat> creatures in nature have the capacity for depression. So the neural pathways and the chemicals that exist in our minds related to depression you can give our antidepressants to other creatures in nature and it will cheer them up hey. which means that the mechanisms are there but perhaps where we get depressed by the fact that our best friends instagram selfies look hotter than ours do in nature it typically tends to be like that gorilla over there is bigger and stronger and has more mates than i do but, you know, the reaction is still the same, whether it's about selfies and social media or it's about natural resources and competition for mates in nature. The instinct to or the chemical reaction for depression is still there. It's, it's still prevalent in all of these these creatures. And that goes all the way down. If you um, listen to someone like Jordan, P Jordan Peterson, for example, um, he mentions that, you know, lobsters um, famously, he talks about how lobsters, when defeated, will be depressed and it'll change the way they hold themselves but then um a lobster who is given an antidepressant will cheer up Yay. So, there you go rolling with riri says as an artist themselves they find it hard to have their stuff edited by other people but also understands that it's fine and can help them to grow yeah Yay. um i do see somebody says uh says that it's rude to me um to change art i mean this process that we're working on changing art is normal we we are going through even calling it crowd design which means that um we get the feedback from the audience and then that helps to drive the changes that we put into our artwork mm. yeah are What's, you giving uh, are you doing giveaways this stream says bum rush the queen yes <laughs> we are do we'll do another every, one in 10 minutes with them every stream because we we're awesome and generous like that now did we show this off on the last stream we didn't okay Don't know what's going on here well surely you know who this is snakey snakerson i think <laughs> oh it's larry the lizard or whatever bill. it's called it's bill the lizard bill that's it <laughs> It's quite um, difficult to make him out in all of the accoutrements. Yes. It is Bill. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I had said to the team that we're going to have Bill be the holder of the brain. Um, the brain <laughs> being one of the pieces of the hero that Alice goes on a quest to recover. Um, just talking about the notions of depression and PTSD um and what it is that makes us depressed the idea in asylum is that alice will be sent out to recover the pieces of her senses so like the eyes for example and then also the brain and one of the reasons that we're doing that one of the reasons why that's the that, those are the shards that you go to collect is because um, by the end of the game, one of the one of the messages that I want to try to reinforce 
is that a lot of our depression is self-made. A lot of our anxiety is self-made. We work ourselves up. So, you know, someone mentioned earlier that, you know, the smarter you are, maybe the more prone to depression you are. One of the things about being, say, creative or being intelligent is that you're able to better imagine all the terrible scenarios um, that may befall you or people that are plotting against you or how, just how horrible life is in general, right? So if you've got a really good imagination and then your imagination turns against you, you're not going to be very happy about that, right? Because so if you've got a dull imagination or you're just kind of like not that creative, you won't be able to come up with all the horrible things that make you depressed in the first place, right? So Bill in Asylum is going to be the holder of the brain. And one of the reasons that we've got him done up like this is that the brain is the master creative creator of illusion. So Bill in his temple will push a bunch of very negative thoughts at Alice in a sequence of events, which basically play out like, like, like kind of like hollow deck simulation type right. things. Um, and that's all being done by the brain. So until Alice manages to wrest back control of the brain, she's subject to this kind of like overwrought super super bill simulation <laughs> of like all the bad things and the, and there's a good reason why he as a lizard where that makes a lot of sense is that when we suffer from ptsd and depression and anxiety and those types of things oftentimes it is the lizard part of the brain the fight or flight response that is responsible for conjuring up all of the the bad things that may happen to us it's sort of the Notion we talked about once before that if you want to feel the lizard brain um, doing its thing, if you hear a noise in a room in your house that kind of scares you, don't go in and turn the lights on. You go up to the door, you crack it open a little bit, and you stick your arm through the door <laughs> uh, in, into the dark room, and then you just leave it there for a moment. The, the sensation you will get from that is the lizard brain hijacking your imagination to tell you that just on the other side of the door is like a xenomorph ready to like rip your arm off, right? Uh, Sounds terrifying. I yeah. don't want to do that. You should do that. I'm sure you'd have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> so, yeah. That's where Bill the Lizard comes in. That's what this illustration is all about. And this illustration was done by Norm, who many of you know worked on the original Alice game. He also worked on the second Alice game. But he's the, the guy behind the vision of like what the Mad Hatter looks like or what Alice looks like in this series. And he, in his sort of normal day job, is a comic book illustrator. So you can see oftentimes when he puts these kinds of scenes together, they feel very comic booky. Right. Yeah. Um, Ghibli Girl is asking about what color this image will be. Um, looks awesome here, but being in color may turn it cartoony. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Um, and we'll <laughs> also have to see, I'm going to scroll the chat back here so you can, um, you can try to catch anything that we might have, have missed. Right. Um, we'll have to see who ends up being responsible for coloring this in. I imagine it's going to be Omri. Um, if you've been watching uh our streams recently you may have noticed that omri is dabbling with sort of um different looks artistically and i don't think that he'll make this look cartoony because he knows it's supposed to be uh quite you know dark right yeah uh so we'll, we'll see but yeah there'll be a couple of turnarounds on this i'm sure as we uh as we see lots of people just love in seeing bill again uh man the bill got an upgrade he did these guys have to be the most wholesome game devs in existence. Why Why is that? Obviously it wasn't here for all the cursing we did earlier. I, I called you a cunt. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Opto chicken. And Bill's still bitter. He got kicked out of a chimney. Yeah. It was a decade ago, Bill. It's time to move on. Well, I think he's going to be a really excellent character for this role. And it was the thing, I think we mentioned it on Patreon, and I, I brought it up. Um, and I think we had a couple of, of comments from our patrons about who could play this role. And there were some really good, you know, people said Humpty Dumpty. And I think, do you remember any of the other names that were brought up? Some of the more obscure Wonderland characters were brought up. But I, I really like the connection from the lizard brain part of your primal instinct to fight or flight and the idea that the brain 
is creating illusion and then how that links into the story of PTSD and Alice's journey to escape from it having to be a sort of reclaiming of the senses. Anyway, it all, like for me, it just all clicked into place and he just made sense. Right. And it also, it'll be, it'll just be funny. <laughs> you get down into this deep, dark snake temple and you're like, who's behind all of this? And then he's like, hi, I'm Bill. <laughs> X Horns says, try sleep paralysis or something scary as opposed to the arm into the dark room thing. Yeah, but it's not so easy to force yourself into sleep paralysis. Never that, had that it. I, I've had it. Yeah. I've definitely had it a few times and mm -hmm. it's it's pretty scary and it, it makes you understand why people think that they've been abducted by aliens or why you could think you've been abducted or that some other sort of supernatural thing might be happening to you like possession or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I, I used to have it quite frequently where I was asleep but then I would become aware of the fact that I was asleep and then I couldn't wake up. And um, yeah, you, you it, if you are inexperienced with it or easily frightened by it, it can turn into a fairly nightmarish experience. If on the other hand, like say you've had some experience with psychedelic drugs, I'm not saying I have, but maybe I have, um, but <laughs> certainly having been experienced with things like psychedelics and having to be reasonable and rational with yourself while under the influence of something like that, that, that warps your brain and makes everything super surreal, um, then you will... I think approach the sleep paralysis thing a little differently like oh this is interesting what's going on here as opposed to ah, i can't move i can't get up <laughs> what's going on aliens uh, somebody here in the chat called jennifer dow i don't know says scruffy bumps was their sleep paralysis <laughs> Yeah, well, Scruffy Bumps will definitely... Ah, oh, I forgot to bring the new Scruffy Bumps bag down. Oh. That's too bad. I did put it up on Instagram the other day, so if you're interested in the Scruffy Bumps bag, um, it looks like... Where is web, web, web review? There we go. That's not Scruffy Bumps. That's Lucky. Lucky Bumps. He's super cute. Um, he he woke up this morning, came downstairs wearing this Rolling, Tone, Rolling Stones t-shirt, and I was like, oh, you like the Rolling Stones. So I said, I told Alexa to put on Rolling Stones. And he started dancing. It was great. <laughs> um, so anyway, Scruffy Bumps bag I put into Instagram. There it is. Um, so this is looking really cool. And if you don't know, Scruffy Bumps is like this horror cat creation that I'm working on with Jen. And then there's going to be this storyline where basically if ever in your life you've ever abused a cat or a dog or any kind of animal... At some point in your life, Scruffy Bumps will come out of the shadows and murder you. And it, <laughs> it could just be something like kind of Final Destination style where you're driving along like a rainy, dark road at night. And then Scruffy Bumps just runs across the road and makes you swerve and crash into a tree. And no one right. would ever know, right? That would be good as well, rather than just having Scruffy Bumps come up to you in the night and just slit your throat. Well, that too. But only, <laughs> but only if it doesn't somehow give away the existence of Scruffy Bumps, right? So... Mm. He needs to be a sort of legend. How did this person die with yeah. like three claw marks across the neck? Yeah, you, you know, but I'm sure we'll have some detective who's got some idea that there's something out there that's killing people. And then they'll maybe find Scruffy Bumps. But they'll get final destinations by the end of the movie. Maybe. Definitely. Right. So Scruffy <laughs> Bumps is like Hitman making kills look like accidents. Yes. <laughs> Hit cat. <laughs> That's exactly right. I like those games. The Hitman the games are fun. Um, so anyway, back to art review. Uh, this was, I think we saw this one last week. This was the library that Omri did. I'm not sure we saw that big old ball one. Okay. Well, so that's kind of a black hole, um, but it's not. It's a portal into another part of Wonderland. Now, this is Wonderland after it's been turned into Umbraland. So okay. this is in like the final third of the game. Um, and this is what young Alice stumbles into and sees where Shadow Alice, which is kind of synonymous with adult Alice, um, what's happening to Wonderland if she takes over. And so the, the final showdown between the child and the shadow takes place inside of this, this kind of darkened, messed up Umberland. So Wonderland, but, but made dark. Okay. Um, so yeah, Omri's doing some really good sketches around this. This is obviously, um, this is taken from the library section or the Fortress of Doors section <laughs> of the first game. So we will be able to revisit those places, mm. but we'll, we will be revisiting dark reinterpretations of them like you see on screen here. 
Flu Faker asks, well, they hope that it'll be wobbling, very close to teetering over. Ooh. Is it going to be old wobbly, shimmery, shifty level? Well, yeah, hope I mean, so. this is one of the things that'll be great is that in the original game, we were stunned that we were even able to have like moving platforms representing flying books in this section of the game and that was a technological marvel right now yes we could have these books be individually physics objects with pages and rippling and falling over and all kinds of stuff going on so it's going to be really cool to revisit these sections of the game with such high fidelity physics and graphics um, at our disposal so it'd be Cool. Yes, uh, X Horns. It does remind you of the library from the first game. Yep. Because it is a revisited Umbra Land twisted version. Well, yeah, it is. I mean, he. I think that Omri did like a straight up paint over of one of the um, that that section of the game. Well, paint over uh, didn't make it from scratch. It's cheating. Um, I don't. You know, some of it's <laughs> paint over, some of it's not. Some of it's kind of inspired. Um, but this is what it looked like in the original game. And then he's doing uh, he's doing some of these sections. That was the earlier version of it. And then he this is the kind of latest version of it. So yeah. All right. Yeah, it's called school. That's uh, that area. a good question from X Horns. Will there be remixes of old songs from past games? As, a, should as opposed be. to just remixes of old levels. Yeah, I think that there it's should be. Um, and I, you know, I've thought about that as well because I was obviously everybody wants Chris Verna to come back, um, but Jason Ty did a lot of the music for Madness Returns, and then there is a cellist um, in San Francisco whose name is escaping me, but that's who you heard playing the theme of Madness Returns on cello. And what I would like is that all of them come back and collaborate together, right? I don't, I don't think that we could really do it justice unless we had everybody back on, on the, the final project. So that could be really cool. Chris Brenner has shown interest. Yeah, yeah. I still talk to Chris quite often, and he's, he's down. He's in. He's down with so, it. So uh, <laughs> it's time. It's time for another prize. We're going to give away, as we said, it's going to be the codes to the Simon Boswell soundtrack for the movie hardware, hardware. <laughs> <laughs> hey come on this is just the way my brain works i am remembering <laughs> it but i i have to stumble around the fact that i used to work with a guy named colin boswell and every time i think boswell i think colin so i have to slow down <laughs> a bit or otherwise so did you ever see hardware oh I, i've seen I, bits of it i'm sure I said I, I used to work in a video shop, like a Blockbuster, but it was actually just in a grocery store, so it was even worse. And I remember we had this movie there, and I remember seeing the cover of it, but I don't remember ever watching it or something like that. So, All right. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know if it's any good, but the guy that is in it, um, <clears throat> the, the main actor, Dylan McDermott, I remember watching him as a lawyer on a TV show called The Practice. And I don't know, that was like back in the day alongside, that was probably in the era where I was watching Friends or something like that. Anyway, I, I really liked Dylan McDermott um, as an actor in that. I watched the trailer for this um, prior to this live stream and it was kind of... Eh. It made you not want to watch it. But, it. but it took us down a funny rabbit hole. So first we looked up the director, Richard Stanley, and then um, that took us to his catalog of movies he's worked on. And we found there was a couple of interesting ones in there, but... That then stumbled us into his latest movie, which is called Color Out of Space. And that is a story based on Lovecraftian um, horror. It's actually an H.P. Lovecraft movie. <laughs> and story. just looking at that poster. Poster. I said, oh, so it's going to be like Mandy. It's going to be mental. And, then, we, and then as we watched <laughs> the trailer, we found that it is literally the producers of... It says it right you there. said it right. <laughs> uh, it is the producers of Mandy... <laughs> Uh, and this is this new horror movie, but we hadn't even, I didn't even know this came out. So that means it's either really good or really bad. It made no money, but apparently had critical acclaim. Yeah. Don't know. So yeah. Kind of want to watch it. But anyway, it was, it was, uh, two degrees of Nicolas Cage and we always like that. And we loved Mandy. Mandy was a lot of fun. Yeah. Anyway, that has nothing to do with. No. <laughs> this is just the, we were playing six degrees of Nicolas Cage. You is it going to be that now? Is, is Kevin Bacon's time gone? Is it now like six degrees of Nicolas Cage? Right. 
<laughs> Somebody's asking, would you consider having some Lovecraftian elements in Asylum? I, I'm getting the feeling that you've not seen our tentacle monster. <laughs> what tentacle? In the one from today. There was one in the one from today. Where is a tentacle monster? Here we go. Would we have Lovecraftian themes? I answer you with this. <laughs> I mean, if we don't have, if you don't call this Lovecrafty, and I don't know what you call this. This is pretty heavily tentacly. Anyway, um, so we're gonna we're gonna do prize. We're gonna give away um, the code, the Colin Boswell for hardware soundtrack, and we're gonna give away the art print of the caterpillar. I really hope you have a question. Well, a couple of people in the chat now are basically agreed. I don't know if they're talking about the color out of space or Mandy, but yes, they said it's weird. So yeah, what's the what's weirdest weird? movie that you guys have seen? Oh, uh, what's the weirdest movie? Yeah, I'm I'm going to stick with Mandy. Does, I mean, that was some. Can it be porn? <laughs> no, no, it can't. Uh, okay, all right. <laughs> um. So, you're going to stick with Mandy as the weirdest movie you've ever seen. Yeah, it, it's just a very striking movie. I don't even know if it was good, but it kind of sticks with you. Yeah, um, so what would be the weirdest movie I've ever seen? That I mean, that's pretty high on the list. It was pretty weird. Ooh, got Midsummer. Midsummer, we that, watched. That was, that was a bonkers that was one. pretty weird. Yeah, um, that's true. Um, you know, I always hate these kind of questions where I have to go... Human Centipede 2. <laughs> I was going to say, Human Centipede was pretty freaking weird. So, I haven't seen it. Don't want to. I'm really? scared. I'm scared it'll scar me. <laughs> Actually, you know what I want to say is the weirdest movie I've ever seen is that stupid Star Wars where Luke Skywalker drinks the milk from the space cow. That was like, pretty weird. At that moment in that movie, I literally was like, what the F am I watching? <laughs> what What is going on? And, and then it just went downhill from there. It just got weirder and weirder and weirder. And I was just like, all right, never mind. Beyond the Black Rainbow, which was apparently a prequel of sorts to Mandy. Ooh, that's got to be pretty strange. All right. So Swiss Army Man. Yay. That was a very, <laughs> very weird one. I thought that one was a lot of fun, too. It was. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, let's go ahead and roll it. Roll um, it. It's going to be, who's it going to be? Three, two, one white zero x zero white rabbit oxo rabbit white oxo rabbit congratulations <laughs> you have won you will need to send an email to support at mysterious.design include your name your phone number your address do all of that in a easily readable format that does not cause anger or frustration for myself or martin really just for martin because i don't deal with this <laughs> uh True. we will then also send you the code that you can use to redeem your soundtrack to the movie hardware by simon boswell the british composer Who's linked to Richard? What's Richard? What Stanley? Stanley, who has produced *The Color of Space*, which we are going to try to watch later today. But don't tell people how, because that's illegal. <laughs> okay, back to art review. Yay. Where were we? Uh, today is what the? It's I can't believe we're already halfway through the year. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's pretty really bonkers. scary. Okay. Oh, um, someone's leaving. We were looking at Bill, and then we looked at the Fortress of Doors stuff. Mm -hmm. um, oh, this one's amazing. And then, but we already saw this. This is the paint over. Yeah. By the way, warning, we don't have that much new art to look at today. Not really. No. The team is working on new art, but um, there's just not a ton of it to look at. I think we're basically done with art review. Of of Alice stuff. Seems like it. It does. All right, so we're going to move on to plushies. Um, so as many of you know, we launched the Anxiety Rabbit over in the Mysterious Shop. Uh, blah, blah, I don't know. It was last week. Something like that. And he's been doing very well. It might be one of our best-selling rabbits to date. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but anyway, he features himself as a rabbit with little magnetic, posable... Um, finger, arm, hands, whatever. And so he can do the clamping the hands onto the cheeks to, to kind of do the, oh no. <laughs> but he can also clamp the hands together to do kind of praying. Now, I wrote that as a feature in the description on the website. What I'm concerned about is that the magnets, if they sew them in 
different, then some people will get rabbits that the hands will refuse <laughs> to stick together. <laughs> and some will get ones there they, where they oh, do stick please together. Please don't let that be a and thing. And I was just thinking like, man, Martin's going to have to deal with these people writing into support and being like, my rabbit won't pray. <laughs> you guys are Satanists. Yeah. You, you hate God. So I think you need to come up with a really good reason, a rationale just reply for why. With yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, this thing's doing really well. If you want an anxiety rabbit and they've got the little zipper pouch in the back um, where the, the anxiety bunnies come out. They do. There they are. Two um, bunnies per anxiety rabbit. Yeah, and then my wife is working on these these things, like more of these things as an extension to the rabbits, I guess. So what are you doing there yeah, i thought you might be that's great you just bit, put the wire into the frame bit more cable could you put more cable in the frame that's that's <laughs> fantastic. thank you that's amazing um anyway so she's working on more stuff like these little the little anxiety bunnies but they've been turned into keychains so i don't know when she's what she's doing with those but she's going to launch those at some point and then she did the anxiety bunny as like a i guess it's like a cart card holder it's a card holder um and again i think she's putting that in a set and then the set is going to have like the socks i was wearing these socks the other day and then she yelled at me and said we don't <laughs> she was like we don't have very many of those don't steal all the socks um but when i was wearing them i thought they were really cute and then one of the bunnies like ends up on the front of your leg <laughs> and he's he's really smarmy so when you're walking around this bunny is always looking out in front of you <laughs> um so yeah anyway the the whole anxiety i think she's going to put together like a set so you get the socks and uh like a sweatshirt or something and a little card holder and maybe she'll throw these um keychainy things in there maybe but anyway that's all very fun yep keep your eye on the mysterious store i would have thought that you would have one of these and then you would carry it around with all your anxieties. i don't need no rabbit man hmm I'm uh, I'm perfectly well adjusted. All right, if you say so. Well, actually, the end of the ride over today was boring. If anything, wow. I didn't need to put my headphones on to distract me or play any games on my phone. I was just watching the world go by. I... What I saw of the world, because it's really grey and gloomy and so sort of, mm. not misty, but you can't see very far out there today. I just don't know you very well, Martin, anymore. It seems you've it seems changed. You're overcoming man. your anxieties. You're losing weight. All kinds of stuff. Using too much weight. Don't okay. Feed me a lot later. Uh, we will. <laughs> Don't worry. It'll be vegetables and fish. Yum, yum, so yum. then Jen is working on a couple new things. Uh, this is a reversible dust bunny plush, and I guess it's sort of inspired. She said that these octopus reversible things are doing quite well in the world. So right. like you flip them inside <laughs> out, one side's happy, one side's grumpy. So we've started talking a little bit about the kind of the story behind something like this if we were to do this um i think a basic one is is just you know you flip them inside out one side is black one side is white and they're just little bunnies and that's fine um i was kind of hoping for something like more emotionally evocative you know so definitely like from a happy to an angry or depressed to happy or something like that so we're still right yeah still in the uh prototyping designing stage yeah so if anybody out there has any ideas for what they'd like to see for a reversible plush um obviously the designs have to be kept relatively simple because you can't you can't have like a full-on rabbit and then reverse it <laughs> i mean you could but it's probably going to be really complicated to probably. make that work um and the factories will get angry at us so anyway i i feel like we're kind of on the verge of knowing something that could be quite funny here and I even came up with a name for that. Um, gener I, I, now I forgot what it was. I thought it was a good name. I Google searched it, and I found that there were like no references to that. All right, then don't all. don't say it, Jen. Don't let somebody frustration oh, flop. She there said it. Go. Somebody's going to go and copyright that. Nah, now. it's fine. So anyway, <laughs> I think I think that having a frustration fluff, the idea would be you you know those things like the 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 stress balls so it's mm -hmm. kind of like a combo of a stress ball plus a plush toy i don't know okay. something to think about yeah somebody's already gone and gotten frustrationfluffs.com very probably he's already emailed us and said do you want this i heard you mentioned it hundred thousand dollars 
So then Jen also came up with this idea. This is imposter syndrome rabbit. And do you know what imposter syndrome is? I believe I've heard the phrase. It sounds familiar, but I wouldn't like to guess at what it is exactly. Oh. Mm. Well, basically, by the way, that really feels like the, the symbol from Prince. Like <laughs> right. the, the artist formerly known as. The rabbit formerly known as Prince. Maybe. Um, so imposter syndrome is this feeling that people often have, especially as they start to attain some notability or some success, that everything that they have is only by virtue of luck. Right. I and remember that, now. And that the actual skills that have gone into whatever it is that they're doing, they don't possess and that they don't deserve those things. So um, I think a lot of people in the world again as they start to have more eyes turn towards what it is that they're doing they start to question whether or not they deserve to have that attention and so i don't know this is um an interesting idea we're definitely exploring a couple more emotional rabbit kind of themes and i wonder if um, imposter syndrome will work it's certainly not as well known as say just like angry right it's a very specific thing to have a rabbit about <laughs> yeah exactly so i guess the question is and jennifer says that is the symbol for bronze which means that you might mistake the gold for bronze or the bronze for gold so yeah that's uh that's a good it's a good thought uh isn't there another element in the table that's literally fake gold that might be the one that we would use the symbol for but then again the alchemists might not have known uh, of that or made a symbol or the symbol may not be as cool as this as the rabbit formerly known as prince might not be hmm. um guitar bard says i feel like a grief rabbit might be timely yeah we actually have a grief rabbit oh yeah pyrite is fake gold there you go right. uh she says jennifer says i try to use pyrite but it looks like a comet hitting the earth well we don't want that uh yeah so somebody's asking if a uh, grief rabbit we do have a sad rabbit design and uh I wonder if I can find that in Monday. Let's see here. There's Monday. Um, so Monday is where the team keeps all their stuff that they're working on. And that includes rabbits. Um, where's the little notifications? Because I know that Jennifer put the dust bunny in there. And that'll take me quickly to... There's goth. Goth is coming soon. Goth is looking really good. They're sad. So I think... Um, this was the original design for SAD, and then we've done a couple of revisions on that. I know they're working on the bags. We actually have the sample of this, but it's... Is it here? No. It's no, not in this some bags over here. Mm. Yeah, anyway, there's so many plush toys rolling around, it's hard to keep track of them all. Oh, you do have the SAD bag. You're, you're, you're a SAD bag, Martin. SAD bag. <laughs> Look at how sad that is. SAD rabbit. Sad. It even says sad yeah. on the back. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the sad is uh, on the way. So we will we will make that happen one of these days for sure. Uh, in terms of other plushy dreadful stuff that we might want to have a look at, there you're, many people are waiting for shy. Shy is on the way. I think basically shy is done, and we did have the update to the scruffy bump stuff. And uh, yeah, anxiety is out on the market. Goth is on the way. Who else? There's another one on the way. Uh, I think Yin is going to push Envy into production really soon. Right. But as you can see on the on the screen here, there is a very long <laughs> list of potential plush toys that are being worked potential. on. Potential. They're not all going to make it. Yeah. Uh, Toto is getting worked on right now and looks really good. I know Yin was working on a bag for that, which is going to be in a sort of... Scroll. Ishtar Rabbit. Ishtar Rabbit. Where is Ishtar Rabbit? Yeah, two up from the highlighted one. I don't know what an Ishtar... I that what terrible movie? Yeah, I just know it as the movie once. Uh, Looks like... What's going on Sa there? Sailor Moon, what's going on there? Jennifer, what are you doing? Why has it got these chains on it? Hmm. Don't know. We'll have to ask... Let us know. <laughs> I thought that was just a really terrible movie that had Dustin Hoffman in it that flopped. That's, that's all I know it, it has. It's super famous for just being bad, so... <laughs> Maybe she's just trying to design a super bad rabbit. Maybe. 
Uh, right. So that brings us to a good segue because someone just asked, uh, speaking <clears throat> of Toto, how is Oz going? And um, what I can say about Oz and the projects around that stuff in general is very limited. Um, but there is something, there's stuff happening. So Chinese publisher Redacted, um, we have just completed a revision of budget, planning, schedule, and hiring, and uh, are now handing that to them. Now, I had said previously, they've mm -hmm. already agreed they want to give us money to build the studio, to build the vertical slice, to build a design Bible for Oz. But that agreement or saying that, yes, we want to do this, came with them saying there's some revisions we want to see to the details in your planning. And so that's the thing we've been working on. So um, this week, it's, what is today, Thursday? Yeah, it'll get sent to them. And then we're going to invite them for another sit down and hopefully we'll get the deal done. Yes. Yeah. Um, at the same mm -hmm. time that that's happening, we've been approached by an investor and we've also been approached by a developer, or not a developer, a publisher, game publisher, um, who are saying they will jump on board once Chinese publisher Redacted jumps on board. So in effect, it sounds like we we're just very close to having like that can start so good. good but when i say very close i still mean that in the sense of deals have to get written and money has to be transferred and teams have to be built so we could still be a year out from you know starting to see screenshots or playables or stuff like that um, it could be six months before a deal is done and then it's going to be you know another six <clears> months <throat> before you start to see the results of that but anyway it is um progress is progress yeah it's always good to get some good news and some momentum. That movement. is good stuff. Um, and there is stuff going on with Alice. Um, and I can't say anything more about that, except we were supposed to get some news around all of that after Memorial Day, because some of the stuff that's happening is linked to companies that are in the U.S. Um, so we were told to expect to hear some news uh, after the holiday. The holiday is over, so I'm expecting we'll maybe start to hear something. Um, and then what else do we have going on? We've got Alice going on. There's some stuff happening. There's Oz going on. There's some stuff happening and building a new studio and then the plush toys and the, it's all, yeah, it's fine. There's, there is more kind of like grander things trying to everything come together, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. Yay. Thanks for tuning in to listen to all of the stuff that we can't tell you. Well, come back next week to yeah. see what else we can't tell you. It's really frustrating because we, we've had to be vague for a long time. And it's because a lot of these deals, as you're working through them, they take a long time. There's not much we can do to force people to do deals with us or to do the deals faster, um, though we wish we could. But it, we're just not in that position to like force people to do things faster. So... Uh, in the meantime, we hope that everybody enjoys like all the art we're producing and all of the story stuff that's being told and, and all that. If you've never tuned in before, I mean, every two weeks we pop up, we've got tons of new art to show. Uh, we talk about all the new story stuff that's getting done. And of course, all this is shared over on Patreon and the progress is being made. It's just that we can't make the progress go faster, even though we'd like to. Yeah. Oh, Julia Melissa's leaving. There's a storm knackering her wi-fi no no oh, no okay um so um, that's got us caught up on oz alice plushy dreadfuls and sure i was gonna say something and then forgot brain fart i can smell it mm. great okay <laughs> so uh last thing and then we're gonna get to some patreon question and answer stuff is you could show off that coin because that was the thing we just launched as a commemoration for the three years that our that our patrons have been supporting us. Um, and also just in general, because it's fun and cool. Uh, we did this uh, this coin and oh, yeah, I know what else we can talk about. Look, Jennifer remade the the site. So this is the old mysterious site looked like this. Which is not bad, but it was like that for quite a long time. Yep. And then uh, Jennifer found this new theme, and that's now on the site. So if you go over to the site, you'll see this new theme that's up and running. A bit cleaner. Uh, yeah, it's very bright. It's very clear. Yep. Um, but anyway, if you go to search for coin, you will find this Memento Mori decision coin. There it is. 
and um yeah we just launched that and it's it's doing quite well and this was really meant to commemorate like all the time that's passed since when we started working on trying to get a new alice king made <laughs> so if you've been on the journey for the last three years um if you were over on patreon last month you could have got one of these for less than you can buy it here on mysterious but if you missed that and you want something to mark the time then you could go buy one of those should we down come this with my, nah, with my shaky hands. Nah, it's okay. Just down cam it. No. Do it. No. Do it. I'm not going to do, do it. it. Do it. Uh, right. So <laughs> question time? No. It's contest time, and then we're going to do questions. All right. What's the question? Um, oh, I don't know. I don't have one now. Um, what were we just talking about? We were talking about plush toys. We talking about Ishtar. I did see somebody say that apparently Ishtar was a goddess from pre-Muslim Persia, apparently. Mm -hmm. So, you yeah, maybe that's where that came from, is the old Sailor Moon look to it. Perhaps. Um, yeah, no question. Um, oh, my God. God. Goddess. Who's your favorite deity? Oh, God. Okay. Oh, God. God is your favorite deity. No. Come on, it's got to be Thor, these, hasn't it, or something? Your, your questions are just so awful. All right, anyway, let, we'll, let, we'll let people have their uh, their say. And that's going to be so you can win a Frozen Caterpillar uh, poster or a, and a Colin Boswell code to redeem the soundtrack to the movie hardware. So yeah. There you go. Uh, I very much liked, although I don't like him, I guess, so much, but uh, playing God of War hearing about how much of an asshat Odin was. I love those stories. Right. You don't realize it. He was a real douchebag. <laughs> I don't. Listen, I came from Texas, and I was raised a Southern Baptist, <laughs> and I was told repeatedly that if I worshipped false idols or other gods, that I would burn in a great big lake of fire. So I'll just say that my favorite god is Jesus, even though he technically wasn't a god. And then it was his dad that's kind of God. But then there's the Holy Ghost and the Trinity. And it's all very confusing. Anyway, in that general direction, just so I don't burn in a giant lake of fire, I'll say that family. I like that all family, right. yes. We've got lots here. Pandora, Morrigan, Kali, Durga, Calypso. Calypso sounds good. Yeah. Superman. The... He's pretty good. Superman is good. So, yeah, I read an interesting <laughs> article the other day that was talking about the rise of the comic book hero in the era of atheism in the sense that we now worship Tony Stark and Iron Man and, and Thor and Wonder Woman as people did back in the day when, you know, we're talking about um, the, the kind of Odin and the Nordic myths and stuff. But, you know, the question was like, how seriously were they taking it then? Or was it just like it's how we're worshiping Marvel superheroes now? Mm. And that as you strip away the the sense that there is real magic and real gods, um, but you follow this stuff as a sort of fiction and those become exemplars for behavior, like, say, Superman, for example. Um, how different is it, right? And they, they were saying that the one thing that Christianity invented was the notion that God is always watching, um, which sort of led towards what is claimed to be the Christian morality, the concern that if I do something bad or if I touch my naughty bits, God will see me doing that and I will get in trouble, um, <laughs> which previously wasn't necessarily incorporated in religion. So I guess the question now will become like, at what point does Tony Stark start watching us. Tony Stark is always watching. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch yourself or Tony will get you. Mm. <laughs> All right. Let's... Uh, uh, Octo Chicken says, My favorite god is Game God American McGee from that PC Gamer cover. Wow. <laughs> that was pretty good. You know, Yin has the original Polaroid... Um, I guess you'd say it's like the test shot that the photographer takes on a smaller camera to check lighting and stuff. Is that the Matrix looking one? Yeah, right. yeah. So she's got that <laughs> framed in her office. It's me and Cliff Blazinski and Alex Garden Gardner Garden. Um, anyway, so <laughs> it's still still a thing. Let's roll living it. Living well, living hell. Uh -huh. Congratulations, you have won. I did just roll it, by the way. That was like a sudden, like it's very sudden. 
Uh, so yeah, congratulations, Living Well, Living Hell. You have won the prizes. That includes the Colin Boswell soundtrack codes and a copy of Frozen Cater Caterpillar, a Frozen Caterpillar signed art print. So you'll need to do the thing. Why don't you tell Living Well, Living Hell how to do the thing? Write in with your name, address, and phone number to support at mysterious.design, format it correctly, uh, tell us that you want a code and a frozen caterpillar print. Do that within the next 24 hours. Or, or else. Oh, we're going to send Lulu around to bite your face. There you go. Oh, boy. Okay, let's... Uh... So I didn't tell everybody at the start of this stream that I was quite sick yesterday. I don't know what I got, but I was tired and achy and and not coffee, but just tired. Something got me. Working um, too hard, man. Yeah. Take maybe. a day off. So let's do questions and answers, and then we can be done with this live stream and I can go die. Okay. What have we got here? What have we got? Well, this is from the recent Fortress of the Mind Patreon post. Fortress of the Mind. This very one. Uh, there it is. Well, starting out, well, this is actually true. Uh, Salah said, Ah, oh, crap, can't join the stream. <laughs> Got a job that starts at 6 a.m., so uh, and that's why we've not seen Salah and their amazing comments. You know, scrolling past. Salah <laughs> always does have the best, most special comments. <laughs> it's true. I like when he confuses people by asking non sequitur weirdo questions. Yeah. It's always my favorite. Um, Melissa Charionak, loving the monochromatic designs and loving the design of the imposter syndrome rabbits. Mm. I still think that's a little specific. Um, and does struggle with it in every aspect of their life. So not sure they could personally be on board for one. Well, there you go. That's Maybe basically imposters like... don't want an imposter rabbit to remind them of their imposteriness. Hmm. Hmm. Fair enough. Um... Owie Phoenix, love the design, love the imposter rabbits. Hmm. Uh, Ten Key Nui says, Well, I didn't win anything. I hate my luck, but congrats. Well, there's one more chance. There is one more coming chance. Coming up. There you go. So stick around. You never know. Uh, Ghibli Girl says, Have Yin make you some soup. She does make me some sort of Chinesey medicine stuff, but it doesn't seem to help. And she made me a she made me a toaster pizza. But she cooked it not long enough, so the center was still frozen. <laughs> and I was too sick to go downstairs and complain about it. <laughs> so, so I was did like, you "Finish it." No, I, I had to. I was. <laughs> that's when you know you're sick. Is like your wife gives you a, a frozen pizza that she's cooked up enough to basically trick you into thinking most of it's cooked, but then you get to the middle and it's still icy, and then you're like. If I had if a I dime wasn't... for every time my wife gave me uh, a frozen pizza. <laughs> anyway, if if I hadn't been sick, I would have got right up and gone downstairs <laughs> and thrown that pizza in her face. But I was sick, so I was like, all right, never mind. I guess I'll just eat the frozen pizza. Poor mm. me. What's the worst that can happen? Poor me. <laughs> all right. Um, Mr. Unbekend uh, loves the idea of the rabbits. What color shall it have? Don't know. I guess black and white, like in the pictures. Yeah. Mm, there you go. Um, yeah, there wasn't a lot of comments on that. Moving on to the Memories of Insanity post. Um, looks like this has got a bunch of stuff with the library pictures in. Austin Cook, OMG, these pieces are gorgeous. Especially excited to see the library again, and it appears Bumby and Radcliffe are up to no good. Who the thunk it? Mm, who would know? Uh, uh, loving yeah. these asylum arts because they are both my favorite sections in the games. Very interested to hear the twist ending. Oh no, just knowing there's a twist ending ruins the twist ending. Oh no. Is there a twist ending? There is a twist ending. There are it's... multiple twists to the ending, don't worry. Oh. Um, yeah, so don't worry. We, we've been working on the ending and it's going to be all good. Ooh, Desert Phoenix is handing out subs, whatever oh. that means. We still don't know how Twitch works. We don't works, know how Twitch okay. works because we're old. Flu Faker's asking, what's a hot pocket? It's when you put a candle in your pocket while it's lit. It's a hot pocket. Don't do that. Is it like a Pop-Tart, but more savory? Like Pop-Tarts are like desserts, yes. but hot pockets can be more yeah, like correct. like a pizza in a, That's right. a bag. Someone wants to know if I'm crying. Actually, I was laughing, so then tears came out from laughing, <laughs> and um, I had to wipe my 
tears of laughter away. I was just laughing at my eating a frozen pizza while being sick in bed <laughs> with man flu. Okay. Rubner's Custom Creations, Loving the Memory Mines. I do love the memory mines. Were they in that post? Probably. Uh, I think so. Somebody's asking if there's a Discord server for my games um, free, they want to know. Actually, it's I don't know. But there is a Discord server attached to our Patreon, but you have to be $5 a month for that. And this is actually kind of a, a terrible time to tell people about it, because you need to be charged. Yeah. So and that's going to happen in July now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you might wait till just before July and then sign up. Yeah. But that is in the tiers <laughs> over there. And uh, it's $5 a month, and it's a great community. So mm. maybe join for that. Yeah. Nicholas Brokaw says, Let Adam know the Asylum image is fantastic. And the Umber adjustment, good word, uh, to the American McGee's Alice location is great too. All right. Do you know if Adam watches these streams? I do not know. Well, he's never he mentioned it before, now but he knows. whenever we have Zoom calls with him, he's always very professional and he's relatively quiet. So he, he is. He doesn't really say much about whether or not he sees the nonsense that we get up to here, get up to here on the live stream. But I take by his disposition when he's on the Zoom calls that he does not approve. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, Adam. <laughs> It might be because I can't freaking figure out how to pronounce his name. That he's, maybe. Maybe. He's just really annoyed at you yeah, and just doesn't want like, to say. Yeah, exactly. Like, if I wasn't working with you and your team, I wouldn't put up with this at all. Yeah. Learn how to say my damn last name. Anyway. <laughs> um, what else we got? It's Montiferum. It's so wonderful. I can't find the right words to explain what I'm feeling. So I just believe in you. No, oh, that's you nice. Uh, your work is great and your minds are amazing. Oh, thanks, Montiferum. Hmm. Um, Spectre, I'm excited to hear that you finally got the beginning, middle, and end figured out. Can't wait to see what you guys have done. Stunning art as always. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Spectre. Okay. Uh, got anything super important in there? Something question mark? Or we need to answer a question? Let's have a look. Or... So we're moving on to a portal to the past. Let's see if there's an actual question or just people loving the stuff. I always ask people to throw their questions into the comments, but despite the fact that we've got 3,000 uh, plus patrons, we we don't get a huge number of of people commenting or asking questions specifically. No. It's pretty weird. I like the old days when people specifically wrote the capital letters like comment. question or yeah. comment well, they don't so do it was anymore. easy to pick out so yeah, there's not really a lot of questions here just people commenting i love the shiz you're doing man that's all right so there you go yeah. all right yeah there wasn't a lot since last stream sorry i think actually <laughs> in this last go around um because we haven't released the latest revisions to the story stuff that there's not a lot of of stuff for people to sink their teeth into um, and write comments about but we we are getting there so like i said at the beginning of this stream i have been working back and forth a lot with alex recently on the story narrative outline and it's up to like 50 something pages now um, more and it's basically the structure of it's all done which is good because it, it wasn't for a while we kind of had the first and middle parts done but we were really searching around for the ending so um, anyway we will be posting up I think relatively soon, like I mean in the next week or so, the latest version of the story document, beginning, middle, and end, and we will open that up to comments and crowd design. And I would expect that the live stream we have after that's posted up, there will be a lot more stuff to talk about. All right. Yes. So um, it is about 20 minutes early, but as I mentioned, I am feeling quite tired. Let's make sure we've wrapped up everything and then we can see if there's any more questions or uh, comments we need to talk about. Yeah, let's uh, have a look in the chat. The chat, and then uh, if not, we're gonna run away. Demon Raven three six five asks: Are we still doing the stages of grief in the game? Yes and no. So we're doing PTSD, and many of the sections of the game are very much linked to the notion of PTSD and what happens to the character and the way that she escapes from the snow globe and the way that she combines up with the shadow 
all of those things link back into PTSD. They all link back into, well, like we talked about today, we, we brought up Bill the Lizard and we talked about Bill the Lizard as a character who, as the holder of the brain and with himself being a lizard and that linking to the notion of the lizard brain, um, all of those are tied thematically into the notion of the stages of grief and or PTSD. Um, so it's all in there. It's at this point all baked in so much that you couldn't remove it if you wanted to. Um, so yeah, we're still doing that. Mm. Xhorns asks, do you plan to add a donate button to the Twitch channel? Um, we don't even know how to do that. I, yeah. Um, I mean, we can <laughs> we have a look. Take a look. Uh, maybe, probably, perhaps. <laughs> do we need to? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> probably. What's it for? Perhaps. People can donate, I guess. I guess. Yeah, we used to get like super, super chat. Yeah, we used to get Maybe. super chats over on YouTube, but um, those were nice because it kind of helped pay for all the prizes that we mailed out. So, yeah, I guess we can look at a donate button. I think we st money still comes in from Twitch, doesn't it? Somehow from all like yeah, the bits uh, and the nonsense exactly. that goes on in the chat. But I think combined total, we get like $300 a month. Um, from Google view uh, ad, I mean not ad views. Yeah, like ad views on YouTube plus like 150 bucks from. Tw so anyway, the the total we get from these two platforms is like 300 dollars a month, right. which probably covers the cost of all the prizes that we ship out. Yay! Yeah. So anyway, that's fine. So uh, maybe we'll have a look. Um, what else we got going on? Maybe that's it. We can be done. Maybe we can be done. I think we get covered some food it all. in you and have a relax. Exactly. I, I think we covered most of it. We got through the art, got through the story. We did an update about stuff that's going on that we can't talk about. <laughs> yeah. We showed off some plush toys. We talked about the anxiety rabbit and the coin. And we gave away some Simon Boswell stuff. And we talked about um, Richard, what's his name? the director stanley mm -hmm. um and we mentioned nicholas cage i mean i think basically <laughs> that's it that was the checklist awesome and i want to say that throughout all of that the um the internet stayed uh relatively stable so we we not switched... a single dropped frame knock on wood that's crazy so yeah we switched over to a vpn server in korea this morning and I've been yelling at Astral that the private IP thing that we pay for that never works um, doesn't work. So we want to not pay for that. And they were like, "We, you have to pay for it, but we can switch where your server is located. So we did a bunch of speed tests and we found that Korea is where we can connect to that's the fastest for Twitch, I guess. They've got a bunch of Twitch servers there. So, yeah. All right. What's that? That's a big chunk there from hmm. Chani Bell. What's it say? No, oh, I know that if a child experiences PTSD that she's still suffering from into her adulthood, you can see actual uh, shrinkage of the hippocampus. That's right. It's the memory center of the brain. That's correct. Well, it can happen even to adults. And we've talked about that on these streams before, is that the notion that you can continually suffer from something like PTSD and not experience long-term damage um, is wrong. So the the need to deal with PTSD or the possibility for long-term damage um, both those things are very real and that is one of the things that does get touched on in what we're doing inside of this story so yeah it's, mm. there you go um any other questions or comments that we need to talk about somebody the just be has just arrived just as we're about to wrap things up uh, <laughs> they're in time well, for the last giveaway so yes mm. you are here in time for the last giveaway and if you did miss earlier parts of the stream and you want to see them you can watch the recording over on YouTube. So. And Twitch, I guess, for like two weeks. Isn't that how long a recording exists on yes, Twitch? Some, something like that. That's right. Okay. Uh, what is the question we're going to ask? Hmm. Do we need a question? Should we just say just people to sound off in the comments and okay. we can say the four things? while they're all chatting that's fine so make noise <laughs> in the comments so that you can win make a prize. some noise i feel like we really should ask the question though um it feels rude not to ask a question like it's a sort of violation of expectations all right have um, you got a question 
I really, my brain is broken, so I don't know. What's your home remedy for getting over a cold? What have you always been taught growing up by your mum or what's good well, for you? After Yin served me the, the still frozen pizza last night, <laughs> I tried to get her to bring me a margarita, but she wouldn't do it. <laughs> I thought... Divorce. Yeah, I thought like, <laughs> you gave me cold, cold pizza, now can I have a margarita and help me feel better? And she wouldn't let me have the margarita. Yenny, if you're watching, I'm, she doesn't I'm upset watch with these, you. Yeah. Uh, somebody <laughs> says, pills crushed into tea, sleep, and chicken noodle soup, OJ and sleep. Yeah, yesterday was basically, I just slept the whole day. I was super tired. So, mm. um, And this morning, I was wishing that I could find that pseudophenadrine stuff, because Yen had brought back some really excellent cold medicine from Japan, but I've eaten it all in the time since COVID because we can't travel anymore. So she can't go over there and buy pills anymore. Um, so I couldn't, I don't have any cold medicine. Mm -hmm. Sprite soup. Sprite Is that a soup? thing? That sounds terrible. You just make that up. I think that person means Sprite and soup. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, soup and Sprite, Sleep. they say. Yes. Alrighty. Well, let's... Um, Panadol. Let's let's uh, just tell people really quick, over on AmericanMcGee.com, you can do the thing that is sign up to the mailing list. Uh, you can follow me on all the social medias. We still have an added Tumblr. It's funny, I've been posting to Tumblr now from the Instagram interface for weeks. Not a single post has got a single, like it's crickets. <laughs> Not even one like, just nothing. So if you're on Tumblr, try to go find me and maybe just poke like on one of my posts. Just one like. That's all we have. You, you could be the first person to give me a like on Tumblr. Could be. Uh, so, anyway, what is it? What are we talking about here? Oh, yeah, follow me on the social media stuff. And then we got Patreon, which we talked about. So you can go sign up for Patreon. And then we got Mysterious, which now has a fancy new web design. So you can go and um, buy stuff over on Mysterious. It looks like Jen even gave it a, uh, a nice little favicon, like a nice... Ew. Yeah, that's well pretty done, cool. Jen. Way to go. Yeah, we paid her for something. I there now you know. And uh, yeah, so there's all kinds of bunnies and gift sets and stuff. A lot of a lot of bunnies. Skulls. And skulls. We do have a whole section of skulls. Skulls, skulls, skulls all day long. Uh so there you go. Those that's the thing. Yeah. Okay. Three we're gonna roll it. Three, two, one. Click a T seventy seven. K the, the, the three makes an E, so it would Celtic be... Celtic-y. Celtic Kitty. Celtic Kitty. Yeah, it's Celtic Kitty. Ce Celtic Kitty, <laughs> anyway. Uh, congratulations, <laughs> Celtic Kitty. You have won. And uh, maybe you know how to do the thing, because we used to have a Celtic Kitty who was on YouTube. So Probably maybe the it's the same, same person. So, uh, well, let's say it anyway. You go for it. Send your name and address and telephone number to support at mysterious.design. Tell us what you won. It's a code for the hardware movie soundtrack and Frozen Cat's Pillar print. I do that in a good format so I don't get angry. Do it within 24 hours or you're not getting your stuff. That's it. <laughs> Always good to end on a fart sound. All right. Well, uh, that's it. I'm tired. I'm going to go upstairs and drink a margarita. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, we will should be back in two weeks with more art, probably some story updates, and then more plush toys and more whatever the hell mm -hmm. it is we do here. I don't know. I don't know why anybody watches this, well, but we love it. Anyway, we love it. We love it. We love you, <laughs> and uh, we hope you all have a good day. And we will see you again in two weeks' time. Bye bye. Right, bye bye.